Hello students, welcome to the class of teacher Meenal Pereira. In this video, we will study about the types of compounds and the type of mixtures. Okay, so we will first begin with different types of compounds. And to understand what are the different types of compounds we have, let's carry out a small experiment. The apparatus we need for this experiment are we need a evaporating dish, a tripod stand, burner, etc. You can see in this diagram, children, evaporating dish, a tripod stand and a burner. The chemicals we require is we require camphor, that is naphthalene balls. We require washing soda, blue vitriol, sugar, glucose and urea. So, these are some of the compounds that we have taken for this experiment. Now, what is the procedure of this experiment is, children, one by one, we are going to take the chemicals in the evaporating dish and with the help of a burner, we are going to heat the evaporating dish. Okay, and after heating, we will study what happens or what remains in the evaporating dish and what is the color of the residue. Residue means leftover. After heating, what remains in the evaporating dish is a residue. Okay, so what will be the color of the residue? From that, we are going to study the different type of compounds. Okay, now first we will see camphor. So, whether there was any residue in the evaporating dish? Yes, and it was black in color. Then, limestone or washing soda. There was a residue and its color was white. Then, sugar. Of course, there was a residue. And it was black in color. And then we have limestone or any other compound you can take. And it, there was a residue in the evaporating dish. And it was white in color. Okay, so children, mainly you will observe here two colors of the residue. Black color and white color. Now, based on this, how we can classify the compound? Okay. Now, based on the color of the residue that we get, we have two types of compound. The first one are known as organic compounds. Okay, so let's see. On heating strongly, some compounds give residue while other do not give any residue or give a blackish residue. The black residue is mainly made up of carbon. Okay, so camphor, sugar and urea that we heated in the above experiment, the color of the residue that we got was black in color which is carbon. Moreover, such compounds are strongly heated in air, combines with oxygen to form some gaseous substances. Okay, so these organic compounds when strongly heated, they form gaseous substances. Sometimes, their combustion is not complete. Then black color carbon remains behind as a residue. Okay, children, you must have seen the burning of the fuel. Okay, the petrol or diesel that we burn in the car. It is an organic compound. Now, have you seen the exhaust pipe of the car or your two-wheeler? There we can see black color carbon, right? Because that when the fuel burns there, it is burning in insufficient amount of air. Okay, so therefore it is forming the black color carbon. So, such type of compounds are called as organic compounds or carbon compounds. So, those compounds which... On heating forms gaseous substance and on incomplete heating gives black color carbon residue are called as organic compounds. Some examples we have that is carbohydrate, proteins that we have in our, or we consume as a food. Then hydrocarbons like petrol and cooking gas. These are made up of organic compounds. Some examples are shown here camphor, sugar and urea. Urea is a type of a fertilizer that is used by plant. So these are organic compounds. Now moving to inorganic compounds. Now, in the same experiment, we saw that there were some compounds that are forming white color residue. Okay. 
So these compounds that decompose on strong heating to leave a residue behind are called inorganic compounds. That means whether it is complete combustion or incomplete combustion, always these compounds will form a residue. And such type of compounds are called as inorganic compounds. Some examples that we have is common salt that we are using in the kitchen or washing soda that we use to wash clothes. Rust. Rust is formed on iron. Okay. Then blue vitriol which is blue in color and limestone. Okay. Limestone means the stone that we use in the kitchen. Kitchen marble stone. Okay. So that is a form of a limestone. Okay, so all these are inorganic compounds. So on heating, they give a residue. Okay, so two types of compounds, organic and inorganic. Now, in addition to that, we have one more class of compounds that is called as complex compounds. Now, what are these complex compounds? These are the compounds that structure have more than one molecule that is formed by many atoms. Okay, so here these molecules have more than one particular element and in the center of this structure metal atoms are also included. Okay, so we have different types of metals that are included here. So basically complex compound is a mixture of different molecules of compounds which are complex in structure. Now some examples that we have is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll contains metal, magnesium. Chlorophyll that is present in the plant, it contains metal, magnesium. Hemoglobin that is present in our blood, that contains iron. And cyanocobalamin that is vitamin B12, this contains cobalt. So these are some examples of complex compound. And various atoms in the molecule of these compounds are joined by chemical bond. In this picture, you can see that all these small color round round, these are atoms which are joined by a chemical bond. So, it's a complex structure. So, these are called as complex compound. Okay, so we studied about organic compound, inorganic compound and complex compound. So, these are the three types of compounds that we have. Okay, now moving further to the next type that is the type of mixtures. Now let's see what are the different types of mixtures that we have. So to understand mixture, let's carry out this experiment. Okay, so what is done here is three beakers are taken. In the first beaker, we have taken little sand and water. In the second beaker, we have taken the crystals of blue vitriol and some water. And in the third beaker, we have taken two solids that is blue vitriol and sand. Okay, so the first one we have sand and water. In the second one we have blue vitriol and water and the third one we have sand and blue vitriol. Then we are stirring the material and in all the three beakers with the help of a glass rod we are stirring the material. Now let's see what happens. Okay, now in the first case, the first beaker where the material is sand and water, of course we all know that it is not miscible. Sand does not mix, mixes with water. Then number of phases in the mixture. Now phase means which two phases you can see here is at the bottom you can see one phase. This is a solid phase and just above the top you can see one more phase that is a liquid phase. So here we can see two phases. Okay. So, this type of mixture is called as heterogeneous mixture which are not mixing with each other. Now, second type we see how many phases we can see here. We can see only one phase because blue vitriol is soluble or miscible in water. So, such type of mixtures are called as homogeneous mixture. Okay. So, where we have two different phase it's a heterogeneous mixture and where we have single phase, then it is called as homogeneous mixture. Now, in the third beaker, 
again we see blue vitriol and sand these both are solid so of course they are not miscible in each other so again we can see two distinct phases here one is this blue color phase of blue vitriol and this sand phase okay so this type of mixture is called as heterogeneous mixture the part of the matter having uniform composition is called phase as i explained you in the previous slide here you can see that this is a uniform mixture only one phase we can see okay whereas in this diagram we see two phase and this diagram also we see two phase so it is not uniform when all the components of a mixture from one phase it is called homogeneous mixture as i explained you and when the components of a mixture are distributed in two or more phases it is called heterogeneous mixture okay so very often in the kitchen also we mix so many things some are completely soluble or miscible for example sugar and water so that's a homogeneous mixture on the other hand if you put chili powder in water it is not going to mix fully so there you can see two phases solid phase and liquid phase so it's a heterogeneous mixture okay so this above activity we have seen that after stirring homogeneous mixture is formed in one beaker okay and that we can see that in beaker number sorry beaker number 2 this that is blue vitriol and water it is forming a homogeneous mixture okay so then let's study little more about this all the particles of a solid that stay together constitute a single phase for example a heap of stone so when i'm taking a heap of stone in a same container it has a single phase a liquid substance along with all the soluble substances dissolve in it together constitute a single phase for example sea water now we all know that sea water is a mixture of various salts but when you see sea water children it is one single phase that is a liquid phase we cannot separate the salt or we cannot separate the different salt from the sea water a liquid all its drops present together or in the same container constitute a single phase example rain drops when you collect rain drops in one container it has one phase the liquids present together or in the same container but not mixed with each other constitute a separate phase for example oil and water okay you try to take oil and water in the same container okay and try to mix it for however long time you are stirring it is not going to mix okay so it is though both are liquids it is constituting a separate phase all the gases present together constitute a single phase okay for example air so air is constituting a single phase okay so different phases we have here okay so we have this now we will study about the different again three types of mixtures okay okay now take three beakers take 10 g of common salt in the first beaker so first beaker 10 g of salt that we are using in the kitchen then in the second beaker we have taken 10 grams of sawdust and in the third beaker we have taken 10 ml or 10 ml of milk okay so first beaker common salt second beaker sawdust and third beaker we have taken milk and to this three beakers we have added 100 ml of water so beaker number 1 beaker number 2 and beaker number 3 in all the three beakers i have added 100 ml of water and i have stirred the mixture now let's observe or let's see what happens now in the first beaker as you all know that common salt or salt is miscible in water we can see only one phase the first beaker shows only one phase 
coming to the second beaker. Sawdust is not soluble in water. So, we see two phases here. One solid phase and one liquid phase. And in the third beaker, milk and water. Okay, now this is little tricky. Now, we don't see milk and water separately. Okay, we observe this as a one phase. Okay, so now let's see whether this milk or milk completely soluble or what is the principle behind that. Okay, so now based on this, that is here whether it is miscible or how many phases we can see, let's study three types of mixture. The first type of mixture, okay, that we see is called as, let's see, the first type of mixture is called as solution. Now, what is a solution? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Homogeneous mixture, we have studied completely soluble one phase. In the first beaker, we saw the homogeneous mixture of water and salt, which is called as salt solution. Now, when we take a salt solution, children, you know that we take little of salt and more of water. So, the substance that is small in quantity is called as a solute, whereas the substance which is more in quantity. Now, here water is in more quantity. So, that is called as solvent. Okay. And together it forms a solution. So, solute dissolves in solvent to form a solution. And this process is called as dissolution. A solution or a solute dissolving in solvent is called dissolution. And it is a homogeneous mixture. Okay. Then different type of solutions that is homogeneous mixtures that we have is as you can see here this is solid in liquid blue vitriol plus water completely soluble liquid in liquid for example vinegar or dilute sulfuric acid where we have in dilute sulfuric acid sulfuric acid added to water we have gas in gas okay for example air is a mixture it's a homogeneous mixture because though it is made up of different gases like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, all these gases are together form a single phase. Then we have solid in solid. Now this is an example of stainless steel which is a alloy which is mixture of two or more metals. Okay, so this is solid in solid and gas in liquid. For example, our cold drinks, okay, or the fizz that comes, that is gas in liquid. Okay, so all these are different types of homogeneous solutions. The composition of a homogeneous mixture, that is solution, is uniform throughout the bulk. What is the meaning of uniform throughout the bulk means the composition is same everywhere. For example, if you see the first beaker, this entire solution has same composition. It is not like that here more of blue vitriol and down less of blue vitriol. No, same. The amount of blue vitriol that is separated or that is dissolved in water is same everywhere. Same thing here, solid in solid. The metal composition is same. Okay, so that is uniform throughout the bulk. If the solvent is a transparent liquid like water, the solution is also transparent. Okay, so salt and water, water is transparent. So after adding the solution, it is also transparent and it passes through a filter paper. Okay, so when you pass it, take a salt, dissolve water in it and then strain it through the filter or that uh, filtrate that you have. At home, you may not have filter paper, but you have the tea strainer. Okay, so just strain the mixer through that, and then you will say that you will find that there is no salt left on the container. All that tea strainer it goes down. Okay, then moving to the second one, this is suspension. So in the second beaker, 
it is a heterogeneous mixture of water and sawdust okay why heterogeneous because we see two phases solid phase and liquid phase it is a mixture of a liquid and a solid heterogeneous mixture of a liquid and a solid is called a suspension so this is a suspension the diameter of the solid particle in a suspension is larger than 10.4 m okay so the diameter is uh, here or it is larger okay so you can actually see the big particles here and therefore light cannot transmit through it moreover these solid particles remains on a ordinary filter paper okay so now suppose this solution or this suspension if you are going to filter it through the t strainer then obviously saw dust will remain on the t strainer okay so it is easy to separate the solid components of a suspension by filter paper because this solid particles are bigger in size okay so very easily you can separate with the help of a strainer when you boil tea also in tea what do you do you take water milk sugar and tea powder then you boil it now sugar is soluble in water okay so when you after making the tea when you strain the tea sugar will not remain on the tea strainer sugar is dissolved in tea okay but the tea powder will remain into the on the strainer okay so these particles are suspension or suspended particles bigger in size we can separate by filtration then the third jadoo okay water and milk now here whether milk is soluble or no okay now see here here what happens is here we can see a homogeneous mixture okay but here the small particles or very little tiny particles of milk are present in water evenly this milk particles are dispersed or present in water in even phase okay and the diameter of this particle is very small okay 10.5 nanometer so that or 10 raised to minus 5 meter okay so very small particles so if you now if you add water to milk and if you try to strain it through a tea strainer okay what will happen it will completely pass through the strainer you will not get any particles on the strainer so such type of mixtures are called as colloid and you remember children these are the this is a heterogeneous mixture because many particles are there it is not completely soluble but because it looks as a one phase we called it or sometimes if you search what is milk it is say that it's a homogeneous mixture but it is heterogeneous colloid because small size particles are there milk itself is a colloid in it the solid and the liquid particles of protein fats having diameter of about 10 raised to minus 5 are dispersed in the aqueous medium okay so all these solid particles which we cannot see with a normal eye but are present in water so it's a colloid apart from this there are some more type of colloids such as solid in gas like smoke liquid in gas like fog cloud etc okay so we have three types true solution completely miscible suspension where the particles are not miscible and colloid where the particles are smaller in size and it looks as if it is mixed okay now coming to compounds compounds we have studied that compound is a mixture of two or more elements in a fixed proportion and what do we see is on inspection of the compound of the type compound and the mixture it is learned that they are formed from two or more units definition itself tells us that whether these units are joined in the state with each other or separate decides whether the matter is a compound or a mixture so if it is joined together it forms a compound for example water is a compound as you can see here it has two hydrogen elements and one oxygen element okay and whereas this if it is not completely or not uh, separate then we called it as a mixture now 
To study this or to understand this better, let's carry an experiment. We have taken two evaporating dishes. In the first one, we have taken yellow color sulfur and in the second one, we have taken iron filings. Then we have taken a magnet and we first we take the magnet near the sulfur. Of course, sulfur is not going to attract to the magnets. Then we take the magnet to the iron filings. It is going to attract the iron filings. Then we are mixing these two. Okay, so in the third one, you can see a mixture. Now, what is the color of the mixture? It is yellow of the sulfur and black of the iron. Both colors are there. And if I am going to take uh, our magnet near this mixture, this magnet is going to or iron filings will stick to the magnet. Sulfur will remain in the evaporating dish. Now what I am doing is this third beaker I am heating for a long time. Now after heating what happens is the mixture of sulfur and iron filing turns blackish in color on heating. Okay and in for the fourth case if you take the magnet near to this particular black residue that is formed here the iron will or the magnet will not get attracted to this residue. Okay so first case it is getting attracted here also it will get attracted but here as it forms a new compound it is not going to attract. Okay so as I explained you the mixture is yellow in color, iron gets attracted to the magnet and in the second case, iron is, does not get attracted to the magnet. Okay, so what we can conclude or what we can study from this is the A, which is a matter obtaining by mixing iron filings and sulfur is or when we take a horseshoe magnet, it is found that the resulting matter or proposes the properties of both the components that is yellow color of the sulfur and iron or magnet attracting capability of the iron. But after forming a compound that is after heating it is altogether forming a new compound with different properties. And why this is happening because a chemical combination took place between iron and sulfur and new bonds are formed and therefore as new bonds are formed the properties of the compound are entirely different. Okay, so a new compound that is formed that is iron sulfide have altogether different properties than iron and sulfur. It is neither yellow nor does it get attracted to the magnet. Okay, so it has all its new properties. Fine, so quickly we will recap this. In this video, we studied about the types of compounds. Okay, then we studied the type of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. We studied about the solution where it is completely miscible, suspension, larger particles not miscible, collide, smaller particles again not visible and in lastly we studied the properties of the compound where we studied that the properties of the compound are completely different from the element that forms the compound. Okay, so I hope it is clear to everyone. Please read this part very carefully. Then table, write, you can write it in your textbook. Thank you very much. Take care.